Okay, so for this problem, it says draw the product. So we have our Fisher projection uh, and then this reagent. So try it and then I'll explain it. Okay, so let's analyze what this is. So CH3ONA, so NA is just a metal, right? And it has a plus charge, so therefore this has a minus charge. That means that we can usually ignore the NA. So it'll just be CH3O minus. So CH3O minus, that's a strong nucleophile and a strong base. That's what we know about it. So a strong nucleophile prefers SN2 and a strong base prefers E2, right? So what do we know about SN2 and E2? Well, SN2 has inversion and then it prefers one prime. E2 is anti-periplanar and it's one prime, two prime, and three prime. That's what it prefers, right? So let's look at where it's being attacked, this molecule. So this molecule is being attacked right here. Why? Because Br is a good leaving group. Um, because if you want to attack somewhere, something has to leave, right? So Br is leaving in this case. So this carbon is where we're attacking, so let's figure out what type of carbon it is. So this carbon is attached to one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. So this is a tertiary carbon. So since it's a tertiary carbon, let's go back here. This is one prime. The, uh, so all it prefers is one prime. But we just found out that our carbon that we're attacking is a uh, tertiary carbon, right? Three prime. So that means that this will be E2, okay? And so if it's E2, we need to, we, to figure out um, how we'll draw our structure, um, our final product. We need this to be anti-periplanar, right? Because a hydrogen is being abstracted and a bromine is being abstracted. So to show that, um, that bromine is uh, anti-periplanar, or it's the same uh, thing as anti-coplanar, to show that we need to convert this Fisher projection into a Newman projection. And that's why it's kind of hard, because you have to convert this into a Newman projection, then convert it. Uh, into anti-periplanar or anti-coplanar, which is the same thing. So I drew these uh, cartoon cars to uh, better show you what I'm doing. So for this, right, this is our Fisher projection. So when we have a Fisher projection, right, um, the Fisher projection, when we have a vertical line, it means that it's going into the page. When we have a horizontal line, it means it's coming out of the page. So for this, so since it's coming out of the page, um, I drew a car, right, to show you what I'm um, uh, actually meaning. Uh, I'm going to say that the BR is on the side view camera on the right, right, and the CH3 is on the left. So this is what I'm doing. And then now what I'm going to do is shift the entire molecule onto its side, right? So the BR was originally here. Now it's pointing away and the CH3 is pointing to, towards you. Okay, so that's all I did. I shifted the entire molecule on its side, just like I shifted the car to its side. Now going um, forward. Uh, so now this is where I convert the, the Fisher projection into a Newman projection, right? So if I'm a guy standing right here, right? And I'm looking, looking at the entire molecule, uh, just like if I was a person standing here, looking at this car. I would see it like this, right? I'd be, I would see it as if um, I was uh, seeing the front of the car, just as if I'm seeing the front of the molecule. That's why the BR is on the left, right? Because if I'm looking right here, the BR is on the left, BR is on the left, CH3 is on the right, CH3 is um, at the bottom. Now, uh, we need it to be anti periplanar for E2 to happen. That means that one of the hydrogens has to be diagonal from the bromine. So let's make one of the hydrogens diagonal. So I keep the front the same, right? The front circle the same, Br, CH3, CH3. All three of those are the same. Now I rotate the hydrogen, right? I rotate the hydrogen to be diagonal from the bromine. Now, uh, and then I see it how I rotate the H right here, right? Rotate the H. This H comes um, directly vertical, and finally the CH3 comes right here. So now since we have that, uh, H and Br are horizontal from each other, and therefore 
we have what we wanted, which is anti-coplanar. Now, um, uh, now what we do is actually abstract, right? We abstract these two, and then we get our final product, which will look like this. It will look like CH3, CH3, double bond, H and H. And how you know that is, all you have to do is, um, see on one side, right, it'll be CH3 and H, and on the other side, it'll be CH3 and CH3, right? So all you're doing is one side is that, the other side is that. Um, so going to this product, right? Going to this product, I can show you this, so it's side by side. Um, so CH3 and H, right? CH3 and H in the back, is this is on the back ring, and then in the front, CH3 and CH3. So on one side, we have two CH3s, um, and on the other side, we have uh, one H and one CH3. Remember that if I didn't, even though I didn't put CH3 here, um, that's implied that this is CH3, this is a CH3. Now I want to show you um, the actual mechanism uh, completely, right? And remember that since it's E2, this is all one step. I don't want you to think that um, this is uh, se multiple steps. This all happens simultaneously. So in the actual mechanism, we have our original molecule, right? And we have CH3O-. So since this is a base, it's going to take away the proton hydrogen, right? So it's going to leave hydrogen's electron. So what's going to happen is the electron, that's why I put it as red, the electron is going to move back and create a carb anion, making this negative, right? Now, this is unstable, so it's going to push the um, one of the electrons here to bromine, right? I'm sorry, both of the, both of the electrons of bromine to, um, to bromine. Because uh, since it's a uh, carb anion, it has two electrons which it can share across this bond. Now when the bromine leaves with both of its electrons, right, that creates a plus charge right here because there's no more electrons. It creates a plus charge and this has a negative charge. Now both of these are unstable so the better solution is just to make a double bond. Therefore it will have zero formal charge because one goal is to minimize formal, formal charge so rather than having a negative and a positive charge you can just make a double bond. And that's why, and remember that all of this happens in one step. Um, it's not like at one, uh, at it's, there's a carbon anion for a period of time. This all happens simultaneously to get a alkene. Um, so then, therefore, after all of that, your final product to, to this uh, question, to this question right here, will be this answer right here, an alkene. So I hope that helped and thanks for watching.